Let's rank the Premier League stadiums for the 24-25 season. Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another video. I hope you are well. As I said, today we are ranking the 24-25 Premier League stadiums. The first thing I do need to point out is that this is my opinion. We're not just ranking this based on size and some of you in the comments might have completely different opinions, which is absolutely fine. Let's keep it constructive. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know your rankings. This is just my opinion. Like I say, we're gonna factor in quite a few different things, size, location, atmosphere, history, my experiences and my opinions. Whether you agree or disagree, let's still go for 1,200 likes on this video. Make sure to click the like button. Make sure to subscribe as well as we're closing in on 68,000 subscribers. And with all that said, let's get into the Premier League Stadium rankings. So then, as you can see, we have got a tier list. The top five, sixth to 10th, 11th to 15th, 16th to 20th, and we've got all the teams at the bottom here, and we will show you a picture of all of the stadiums. Let's go through it randomly and start with Newcastle United, who are going straight up to the top. I love St. James's Park. I was lucky enough to go a couple years ago, and the atmosphere is just, oh, it can be unbelievable. I mean, the size of the stadium as well, the location, it just ticks all of my boxes. I really like the design of St. James's Park, very different to most stadiums. Um, you can see out into the city itself if you're in the away end, um, which is really high up. Some people like the away end being that high, some people don't, that's just a, a matter of opinions. Uh, but I, I just really like Newcastle United, St. James's Park. It's going straight up to the top. Next up, you've got Bournemouth, you've got the Vitality. It is the smallest stadium in the division. Um, I know some people like to, you know, take the mick, but I'm not going to be like that. But I will have them down at the bottom. Uh, I just think when you're in the Premier League, that size of stadium, is, it just doesn't quite cut it for me. Um, maybe in the Championship or League One, you know, it can hold its own a bit. Um, but just based on the size and therefore the, the capacity and the atmosphere, it will just lack a little bit. That's not me saying it's terrible. And I do like Bournemouth. I've backed them to do well in the upcoming season. But today we are dealing with some stadiums that I really love. So for me, Bournemouth, I'm sorry, you're going down here. Next up, you've got Brentford. You've got the Brentford Community Stadium. I quite like this. I did go to Griffin Park quite a few years ago and um, it was very old school. And yes, with Brentford now moving through the divisions, they did need to improve on the stadium. Um, it's still relatively small, but that's okay because, you know, it's, it's, it's good enough for Brentford. It holds about 17,000. Uh, the design of the seats is a little bit peculiar. I'm a bit unsure if I like the multicolored seats or not. Um, it's definitely not the worst but I probably still will slide it into my bottom five. Brentford fans, do share your thoughts. I still do quite like it though. Next up, we're gonna stay in West London. We've got Stamford Bridge, the home of Chelsea. Holds about 40,000 fans. Quite iconic, really. I've been to Stamford Bridge and the location is all right. Um, there's a tube station just down the road, so that makes it easier. Um, I'm not going to have it in my top five, but it is definitely in the top ten, just because it is an iconic stadium. Uh, decent atmosphere at times. Let's put it there. Next up, oh, this is brilliant. You've got Anfield, the home of Liverpool. This has to go right at the top. And they have actually expanded it, so it now holds more fans than it did before. Um, yeah, I mean, it's iconic, isn't it, Anfield? And, and the atmosphere that they create... Let's put Liverpool right up in the top five. Um, a question to the viewers, Newcastle or Liverpool, which one do you prefer out of those two? Because I really like St. James's Park and Anfield and I associate both of them with, with history and incredible atmospheres with great fan bases. So they're both gonna be right at the top. Next up, you've got Craven Cottage, which has had some redevelopments. Um, I think it's a nice, pleasant stadium. I really like the location actually. Um, I don't believe there's a tube station that close. I think it's a bit of a walk to the nearest one, but it is right on the Thames. There's a couple of parks nearby. It's, it's a nice area of London, really. In terms of atmosphere, it can fluctuate. I do like that the away end is behind the goal. I'm gonna put Fulham in this category. I think they do get quite a bit of slack for the clappers. Um, 
but in terms of Premier League stadiums, I'm going to put it in this one. Next up, you've got Aston Villa, you've got Villa Park. I just think this is just so iconic and... God, it's going to be so good to see Villa Park in the Champions League. And I know most Coventry fans are not too keen on Aston Villa, but I do respect that they've got such good history and tradition. And for me, they've got to be in the top five. It holds 42,000, which is not like in the top five biggest. I think that's probably about seventh or eighth biggest. Uh, but, oh God, I just think the atmosphere can be incredible. I've been to Villa Park probably about three or four times. I'm going to put it in this category. Like I said, seeing Villa Park in the Champions League next season could be could be amazing. Next up, you've got Nottingham Forest. You've got the City Grounds. I think a lot of you know what I'm going to do here. If you've seen my channel before, top five. I love the City Ground. I, I don't know what it is. I just think it ticks all of my boxes. Yes, it's not the biggest in the Premier League. It holds about 30,000. Yes, there's been talks about redevelopments or moving away, but I just think based on my experiences, I love it. I really love it. It's right on the River Trent. Um, Nottingham, decent city. You've got quite a bit to do. Across the river from Meadow Lane, of course, which is the home of Notts County. Um, the atmosphere for me is one of the big things here. When they sing Mull of Kintyre before kickoff, uh, it can be deafening. I think for me, the city ground has got to be in the top five. Like I said, it comes with so much history and tradition as well. Let's not forget, Forest have had some incredible moments in their history. Um, a fun fact for the Nottingham Forest fans, if they didn't know this, that they did win the first division at Highfield Road, which was Coventry City's former ground back in the 70s. Next up, you've got Manchester United's Old Trafford. This is going to split opinion because uh, based on the name itself and the history, it's definitely one of the best. When it comes to the condition and the atmosphere, that's where some people could drag it down. Um, it, it depends, doesn't it? Because on some days, the atmosphere at Old Trafford can be amazing. Some people will also mention, though, that you can get tourists with them being such a big club, which might kill the atmosphere a little bit. Um, and of course, they are looking to move away from Old Trafford and um, it is falling down to an extent. Um, they need a big umbrella over the stadium, don't they? I can't put it in the bottom two tiers, that's for sure, because of the history and size and everything that comes with it. Um, but I'm not going to have it in my top category. What do you think? Is it fair for me to put Man United about there? What do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Next up, you've got Crystal Palace and Selhurst Park. This is difficult because when it comes to atmosphere, it can be really, really good. The Palace fans can be bouncing. Uh, definitely got an old school feel to it. And I don't know, the stadium has a bit of a push-pull factor on me. Uh, I don't want to put it in my bottom five, but I'm going to put it at the top end of the bottom five for me. Um, when I compare it to Craven Cottage, maybe Fulham's is just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. It's a matter of opinions. There's not a lot in that for me. Next up, you've got Arsenal. Arsenal could go in the top five, couldn't it? Uh, but we've also got Tottenham Stadium coming up. I've been to the Emirates a couple of times. I like it. Good stadium. Uh, would be great to see them win the Premier League at this stadium. Of course, last time they won the Premier League, they were playing at Highbury. I'm going to put it sixth. I'm going to put it on the edges. I do like it. Um, I suppose when I went, it was a cup game against Coventry. So maybe I didn't capture the Emirates at its best in terms of atmosphere. So um, maybe one day, if I'm lucky enough, I'll go to an Arsenal versus Tottenham game. And then I'd really appreciate the atmosphere a bit more. Next up, you've got Brighton and Hove Albion. Ah, this, is, this is where I'm a bit stuck because... In my opinion, without sounding totally harsh, some stadiums like this are just a bit too similar. Um, and in terms of location, I believe it's quite difficult to get to. So that maybe weighs it down. Uh, atmosphere, okay. The away end behind the goal, I quite like that. Holds about 31,000. I'm going to put it uh, there. I don't think the Palace and Brighton fans will like me putting them next to each other. I'm going to have Palace just in front. Let me know if you agree. On to Southampton next, you've got St Mary's. Once again, some people will point out that it's a bowl stadium. Um, I think it's all right. Decent atmosphere. Um, definitely some decent memories created there in the Premier League. I think I'm going to put Southampton St Mary's in this category. 
And I'm also going to do the same with Leicester City's King Power, which I have been to as well, of course. Leicester City Stadium does actually remind me a little bit of Coventry Stadium, just because it's the new design that a lot of clubs have gone for. Um, it holds 32,000, the same as St Mary's, so I'm going to keep them together in that category there. Next up, we have Everton and Goodison Park. Ah, this is going to be difficult because... They are moving to a new stadium, um, which looks nice. You know, I'm excited to see what that's about. Goodison Park comes with a good atmosphere. The Everton fans are some of the noisiest in the Premier League, uh, but it depends what day you catch them on as well. You know, if your team turns up and beats them 3-0, um, the Everton fans are not going to be at their loudest, are they? That said, though, it also comes with a great history. Oh, mm, I'm going to put them about 7th. Uh, I don't know. I, th I feel like Everton's Goodison Park is one that a lot of people are split on. Um, some people really love it. Some people would put it top three. Quite a few people I've seen are not as keen and they'd put it quite low down. I think I like it. I'm going to put it top seven. Should we go above Arsenal? Oh no, let's, let's keep it there. Next up, we've got Ipswich Town and Portman Road. Now this is one that... Um, you know, the Premier League regulars will be excited to get to because it's a new face. Uh, Ipswich have not been in the Premier League for over 20 years, so it will definitely be interesting to see Portman Road in the Premier League, and you can guarantee they will make a good noise. Whether Ipswich have a good season or a bad season, you can guarantee they are going to enjoy being in the Premier League. Um, I believe Portman Road holds about 30,000. Do you know what? Just because I think Portman Road's going to make a good noise next season. Should I slide it in here? Or do we go there? I'm going to put it 11th, right in the middle. Ipswich fans, what do you reckon? I'm sure you're excited to get to these other grounds as well. Next up, we've got Tottenham Hotspur. Does it have to go in the top five? I think it might. Let's go here. This is, this is an interesting one because... Um, as I've expressed before, I do prefer older stadiums, but that's not to say that I can't enjoy a newer design. And with Tottenham Stadium, it's very different to the other new stadiums that we've seen in recent years. I really like that big, is it the south stand behind the goal? The away fans are sort of in the corner. It seems like you can generate a good atmosphere here. I've got to put Tottenham in the top five, so I'm going to put them there. Next up, West Ham United. Ah, oh, this is always difficult for me, but I think I am going to have to go with the London Stadium in my bottom five. Um, it's certainly not one of the smallest. It's one of the biggest, if anything. But as we've said, it's not based on that. I think what I put it down to is the fact that I went to Upton Park before and I really, really liked Upton Park, the design, the history. Um, I suppose West Ham are going to create their own history with the London Stadium. But as a lot of people keep saying, it does feel like you're quite far from the action when you're in the stands. So West Ham is definitely like Marmite. People love it. People hate it. I'm going to have it there. After that, we've got Molyneux and Wolves. Now, I've been to Molyneux twice and the last time I went was about 10 years ago and I thought it was okay. When I went last season, it went up even more in my estimations. Now, that's not just because Coventry won the cup game. But to see the Wolves fans singing Hi Ho Wolverhampton, to see the Wolves fans putting on, you know, a great display as well, um, you know, holding up those things before kickoff, um, and the fans always seem to make a good noise, and they were so respectful as well. I'm going to put Molyneux in my top 10. I'm going to have Wolves just there, actually. Holds 31,000. It's a nice middle-of-the-range Premier League stadium, and for me, it's sneaking into my top 10. And finally, then, we have the Etihad, the home of Manchester City. Difficult to place this. It's definitely a bit like Marmite as well. Um, I think it's a great facility, but obviously people like to poke fun and say it's the empty had. Um, and yeah, with it being a top club, you do get tourists. And what I think is a factor you need to remember with the atmosphere is Manchester City fans are probably so used to winning week in, week out that uh, maybe for a few games, the atmosphere can be found to be a little bit lacking. I do think, though, that what I've seen from Manchester City fans on the road, they can be really good. Uh, but we're looking at the Etihad here. Great facility, mixed feelings on it. I'm going to put it in this category here. Let me know your thoughts. That's going to be my tier list here. That's my opinion of the 20 Premier League stadiums ranked 1 to 20 
for the 24-25 season. So then guys, that wraps up today's video ranking the Premier League stadiums for the upcoming season. Just remember though that that is my opinion and if you have a different opinion, that's absolutely fine. Let's just keep it constructive down in the comments rather than thinking I just hate your club, which is not the case. If you've enjoyed the video, do make sure to drop a like and make sure to subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Take care, peace out.